uh, welcome to this particular uh, lecture. Now, uh, in this lecture we will look at uh, uh, electronic module or signal conducting circuit uh, for gas sensor. Now, when you talk about sensors there are several kind of sensors. So, uh, starting from thermal sensors right uh, we have pressure sensors, force sensors, then we have piezo resistive sensors for strain gauge. Uh, we have uh, VOC sensors which stands for volatile organic compounds, we have gas sensors right uh, and uh, so on and so forth. There are a lot of uh, other sensors as well that we, we, we I have not talked about, but uh, uh, there is a slide which will explain a variety of sensors available in market and from those sensors we will pick one which is the gas sensor, we will understand what kind of gas sensors are available, we will understand what is the principle behind the gas sensor and then we will see how can we design an electronic conducting circuit for that particular sensor. Now, when I am talking about gas sensor, uh, if you think from uh, engineering point of view uh, or from the industry point of view in, in fact, then you can use this sensor for sensing CO2 right uh, which is a leakage in a industry or you can use the sensor for understanding the leakage in a pipeline which is a chemical pipeline and there is a uh, uh, there is a importance of measuring that particular uh, leakage uh, in an industry. Now, when you talk from medical point of view uh, if I have a group of sensors I, I can delineate a particular volatile organic compound from the breadth and that is called a studying the breath signature uh, of a patient. For example, uh, if a patient is suffering from a particular disease, the the uh, the uh, sum of the volatile organic compounds will be in higher concentration compared to other VOCs. So, uh, if a person is suffering from ketosis which is a diabetes uh, then the so also our, our, our uh, breath has several kind of VOCs along with gas. The VOC stands for volatile organic compounds like I said for example, we are using uh, uh, petrol, diesel right. Now, I do not say we, ex we exhale a VOCs which are similar to petrol, diesel I am just giving an example of volatile organic compounds. So, if you drop a petrol uh, on the table it will uh, evaporate. Same way drop out uh, uh, diesel on the table it will evaporate, drop acetone on the table it will evaporate, drop ethanol on a, on a table it will evaporate. All things which are volatile in nature at home temperature are called volatile organic compounds. So, what I said is that we exhale several VOCs like acetone, methanol, you know IPA and, and uh, similar kind of VOCs along with CO2 and humidity uh, in, a, in, a, in our breath. Now, if a person is suffering from particular disease certain VOCs are of higher concentration compared to remaining VOCs. If you can detect or if you can delineate those VOCs from the breath then what you can say you have uh, developed a non invasive way of measuring disease. Now, the point that I am making is that uh, if it is a if it is a cancer then also you can detect uh, a certain VOC is in higher concentration compared to a person who is uh, normal and if you check the breath signature of the cancer uh, the person suffering from cancer and person who is normal. So, the point here is that if I can design and fabricate a sensor and I can use those sensor or one or uh, array of sensor along with the electronic conducting circuit then I can understand what is going on uh, and how can I see the change in resistance corresponding to the particular VOC. So, if it is a resistive sensor when you expose the sensor to a gas the resistance would change that resistance we need to convert to a, a readable format for um, changing from the change in resistance to a readable format what we need to use we have to design the signal conducting circuit. Now, let me play the first video for you, so you know what kind of sensors are available uh, in market. In our normal life we use different types of sensors that are commonly used in various applications. All these sensors are used for measuring one of the physical properties like temperature, resistance, capacitance, conduction, heat transfer etc. In this video, we have seen different types of sensors along with their practical applications. 
There are a few types of sensors such as temperature sensors, infrared sensor, proximity sensors, pressure sensors, level sensors, smoke and gas sensors, ultrasonic sensors, and touch sensors are commonly used in most of the electronics applications. Temperature sensors A temperature sensor is a device, typically, a thermocouple or RTD, that provides for temperature measurement through an electrical signal. In other words, a temperature sensor is a device that detects and measures hotness and coolness and converts it into an electrical signal. There are different types of temperature sensors like LM35IC, thermistors, thermocouples, RTD etc. Temperature sensors are used everywhere like computers, mobile phones, automobiles, air conditioning systems, industries etc. IR sensor An infrared sensor IR is an electronic device that emits in order to sense some aspects of the surroundings. An IR sensor can measure the heat of an object as well as detects the motion. These types of sensors measure only infrared radiation, rather than emitting it that is called as a passive IR sensor. Different applications where IR sensor is implemented are mobile phones, robots, industrial assembly, automobiles, etc. Proximity sensors a proximity or presences sensor is the one which is able to detect the presences of nearby objects without any physical contact. They usually emit electromagnetic radiations and detect the changes in reflected signal of any. Proximity sensors are also used in machine vibration monitoring to measure the variation in distance between a shaft and its support bearing. This is common in large steam turbines, compressors, and motors that use sleeve type bearings. Pressure sensors. A pressure sensor is a device for pressure measurement of gases or liquids. Pressure is an expression of the force required to stop a fluid from expanding, and is usually stated in terms of force per unit area. A pressure sensor usually acts as a transducer, it generates a signal as a function of the pressure imposed. Pressure sensors can also be used to indirectly measure other variables such as fluid or gas flow, speed, water level, and altitude. Level sensors. A level sensor is one kind of device used to determine the liquid level that flows in an open system or closed system. The level measurements can be available in two types namely continuous measurements and point level measurements. The continuous level sensor is used to measure the levels to a precise limit, but they give correct results. Whereas point level sensors used to determine the level of liquid whether that is high or low. Ultrasonic sensors. An ultrasonic sensor is an instrument that measures the distance to an object using ultrasonic sound waves. An ultrasonic sensor uses a transducer to send and receive ultrasonic pulses that relay back information about an object's proximity. Ultrasonic sensor can be used for measuring wind speed and direction, tank or channel fluid level, and speed through air or water. Smoke and gas sensors. A smoke detector is a device that senses smoke, typically as an indicator of fire. Commercial security devices issue a signal to a fire alarm control panel as part of a fire alarm system, while household smoke detectors, also known as smoke alarms, generally issue a local audible or visual alarm from the detector itself. Touch sensors Touch sensors are also called as tactile sensors and are sensitive to touch, force or pressure. They are one of the simplest and useful sensors. The working of a touch sensor is similar to that of a simple switch. When there is contact with the surface of the touch sensor, the circuit is closed inside the sensor and there is a flow of current. When the contact is released, the circuit is opened and no current flows. Touch sensors are used in a wide range of display applications, from smart homes and appliances to security and industrial solutions. Dear viewers, Thanks for watching the video. Okay, so what you have seen in the video is that uh, there are several kind of sensors and then uh, from those kind of sensors we will be talking about uh, metal oxide gas sensor. So, uh, when you talk about metal oxide gas sensor, uh, this is a conventional sensor construction uh, where you can see uh, a ceramic tube and uh, the ceramic tube has uh, a center SNO2. What does SNO2 stands for? SNO2 stands for tin oxide, alright. 
and then there are electrodes. So, uh, uh, let me first show you few of the sensors and then we talk about sensor construction it will be kind of easier. Uh, if I want to show you the uh, sensor uh, I have brought few of the sensors uh, which we have bought from Taguchi, Taguchi is a company in Japan. So, if I show you the first sensor, the first sensor uh, if you can uh, see it has a four different terminals as you can see in my hand and this four terminals is having and in the front there is a mesh, it is a there is a cover, uh, there is a role of having four terminals and a cover. So, we will see what is the role, I will, I will open the second sensor, so you will understand uh, and actually I will show it to you few of the sensors. This is the second sensor again you can see here there are four different pins uh, which you can see and in the front there is a mesh right there is a mesh in the front and if you see there are four different terminals uh, which are here. Now, there is a role of this four different terminals and I will show it to you uh, in the in the slides uh, what each terminal role is there all right. Same way if I show you another sensor I can show it to you right over here right and here what you see is again there is a casing on the top and there are four terminals in the bottom. Again, what is the role of these four terminals? We will check uh, in the in the next slide, right? Uh, and each sensor is meant for a particular application. Now, let me show you a sensor with a kind of signal conditioning circuit. So, now I am holding a CO2 sensor uh, which is right over here. Uh, so, if you see the CO2 sensor, yes, uh, and in the back side there is a whole signal conditioning circuit which you can see here. Right. So, this comes with a signal conditioning circuit, but if I talk about other sensors they do not come with signal conditioning circuits. For example, if I am showing it to you uh, uh, the earlier sensors that I have shown uh, they do not come with signal conditioning circuits uh, these three sensors right all three sensors they do not have any signal conditioning circuit, but this one has its own signal conditioning circuit which is on the back side this is the front side right. So, it is kind of very easy to understand easy to see how the sensor looks like. Similar sensor if I want to design a signal conditioning circuit using Arduino or using Raspberry Pi 3 uh, what kind of circuit we can design we will see in the slides. Now, if you focus on the uh, on the slide what we see is uh, there is a sintered SNO2, SNO2 stands for tin oxide right. Now, uh, there are lead wires. So, let me uh, write down uh, or, uh, or uh, give the number number to each of the wire. The, so, lead wire 1, lead wire 2, uh, heater coil is 3, 1 here and the second end of coil is given number 4. Now, you can correlate why we have four different terminals at the back side of the sensor or we have four different pins for each sensor. The two pins, pin number 3 and 4 are meant for heater, while pin number 1 and 2 are meant for electrodes, electrodes all right. So, uh, we have 4 then that is why each of those sensor were having 4 different terminals. Now, uh, uh, there is a ceramic tube and within the ceramic tube there is a sintered tin oxide. Uh, why it is called metal oxide? Because you see this is tin, this is indium, this is zinc this is tungsten if I want to have metal oxide then I will have tin oxide, indium oxide, zinc oxide, tungsten oxide all right. So, this is how the uh, metal oxide semiconductors uh, uh, uses sensing uh, material they use uh, the, we had to use a metal oxide uh, semiconductor as a sensing material in the uh, sensor while you require a heater to increase the sensitivity. You know, we will see why heater and how heater can help in increase, increasing the sensitivity in, uh, uh, in few slides. For now uh, this is a conventional way of fabricating a sensor. If I see a second way of fabricating a sensor it is using a thick film technology. Now, if you know integrated circuit technology right then you will understand that there are several kind of technologies one is thin film technology and another one is thick film technology. In thick film technology we use screen printing, screen printing right. So, 
uh, using this screen printing technology using the thick film technology we have fabricated a sensor and that is why it is called thick film technology. Now, again the, the front side of the sensor right if you see if you take a substrate substrate can be substrate can be silicon substrate can be silicon dioxide substrate can be alumina right substrate can be polymer also. Hmm. So, if I take this substrate this is a substrate right, and this is the substrate front side this is substrate back side then if I have a electrode right like this. And on that electrode if I if I use a sensing material which is my metal oxide semiconductor right on the back side I have a heater on the back side I have a heater this is a back side this is a front side ok. So, now what is the advantage of screen printing is that we can have a uh, high throughput we can fabricate lot of sensors very quickly right. The disadvantage is that we cannot miniaturize it beyond a certain point we cannot make it tiny alright. So, there is a disadvantage um, uh, again after you do the screen printing you have to sinter the material you have to heat or anneal the, the semiconductor metal oxide uh, or metal oxide semiconductor to certain temperature uh, so as to uh, form the sensing layer. This is an example of uh, uh, the type D1 right uh, which is model 2G A uh, 2G uh, uh, sorry TGS uh, 26XX uh, which is uh, uh, again from Taguchi and then let us see the uh, circuit electronic circuit uh, or conditioning circuit uh, for, for using these uh, sensors. So, the first thing is we have to apply a voltage uh, we will apply a 24 volts AC or DC uh, uh, which is your voltage across the uh, semiconductor and then we have a heater voltage which is your 5 volts and then finally, you have a load register which is uh, variable in nature all right uh, and the uh, power consumption uh, should be less than uh, 15 milliwatt. Uh, if I go for the related equations then this is how the equations are uh, uh, placed uh, where we have r equals to v c by v out minus 1 into r l equals to rho by l by a rho l by a is nothing but the resistance resistance and rho is just resistivity l is your length and a is the cross sectional area. If you if you increase the length the resistance will increase if you decrease the area resistance will increase if you are increase the resistivity resistance will increase if you decrease the resistivity resistance will decrease you cannot change the resistivity if I using the same material but you can always change the length you can always change the area. Yeah. Thus, the resistance is depending on length and area and it also depends on resistivity, but for the single metal you cannot change the resistivity. So, depending on what kind of resistance you want for a final heater you need to select that particular material or a metal um, uh, for fabricating that particular heater. So, if you see the uh, slide at the L is equals to the distance of electrode A is cross sectional area of sensing layer uh, rho is specific resistance of the sensor uh, then we have specific conductivity uh, we have mu mobility we have n concentration of charge carriers and finally, q is a charge of the charge carriers. So, at a constant temperature we have mu constant that means, r changes due to change of concentration of the charge carriers and by gas reactions. Uh, so, if I talk about the working principle uh, what happens is if I just zoom it out uh, this uh, gas and the sensing material uh, is consisted of several grains we call grains g r a i n s ok and uh, each grain uh, will lose some electron and will cause a depletion layer a depletion boundary around it by losing some electron it will have a depletion boundary around it right in presence of the uh, oxygen in air all right and this causes this depletion layer that i have drawn across the brain will cause some kind of resistance value which we call as a base resistor now if i if i inject a oxidizing gas. So, there are two types of gases oxidizing and reducing 
if I use oxidizing gas then the electrons will be depleted further from the depletion layer uh, and the resistance of the sensing layer would increase while if I use a reducing gas then the electrons will be donated and the depletion layer width will reduce causing the resistance of the sensing layer to decrease alright. So, based on what kind of gas we are using uh, whether it is oxidizing gas or reducing gas we will see the change in the resistance this initial is a base resistance or, or uh, sensor base resistance this is sensing resistance which is different than the base resistance either this resistance would decrease or it would increase right. So, that is what uh, uh, is a basic principle behind the gas sensor or metal oxide gas sensor in particular uh, same thing is shown here that in the presence of oxygen there is a creation of depletion layer if you have a combustible gases like CO2 then the depletion layer would increase and resistance would increase. So, the question is why we have to use metal oxide uh, semiconductor gas sensors uh, this is because of the volume defect SNO2 is not stoichiometry in air but defect structure SNO2 minus uh, 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 this one right uh, shows the oxygen vacancy uh, defects uh, so that is why we can use uh, the SNO2. Uh, same way if you are talking about the operating principle like I discussed each is consist of a few grains and there is a, a depletion layer which is a space charge layer that, that is created in presence of uh, uh, oxygen and on, on uh, inducing uh, oxidized gas or a reducing gas this depletion layer width will change. So, uh, if I talk about just CO2 then uh, you can see here that uh, uh, my my uh, my energy band diagram also changes with respect to the uh, reaction of the CO2 onto the uh, semiconductor oxide and here you can see that O2 minus adsorption consumption by reaction with oxi oxidizable gas molecules uh, how the energy band uh, diagram changes where if I talk about uh, the SNO2 then this is how reaction occurs that uh, with SNO2 uh, if there is a uh, uh, the, the sensing material is of SNO2 and if I uh, use CO2 uh, as a uh, gas to be sensed then this is the reaction that is uh, involved. So, oxygen surface reaction is the porous metal oxide sensitive layer surface gas reaction with adsorbed O2 minus states and the reaction occurs as 2 CO plus O2 minus gives 2 CO2 plus electron again you can see that we have CS3 CS2OH plus 3O2. So, CS3 CS2OH is nothing but your ethanol and if you have that then again you have a electron that is released you have NO2 electron is uh, you know released uh, it is absorbed while you have H2O then you have electron which is released. So, when there is a electron is released what happens is that uh, the uh, electron is released I mean into the uh, into the material the depletion layer would reduce and that depletion layer reducing of depletion layer will cause change in the resistance which is the reduced resistance. So, you understand by this if the electrons are donated then what will happen resistance reduces right, but if the electrons are taken up from the material resistance would decrease this is what is there. Now, we need to know why we have to use signal conducting circuit if we have such kind of sensors right and then I will show it to you one example where I will uh, show it to you how the process flow for fabricating such kind of sensor can be designed alright. Uh, so, that you know that in your laboratory can you design such kind of sensors as well or not. So, if I see why signal conducting circuit is required then uh, first is we are talking about MQ7 and MQ7 stands for gas sensor. So, uh, if you see MQ7 gas sensor data sheet the heater voltage has to be provided with high and low values for 60 seconds and 90 seconds as shown in figure below. Now, before we go here let me just talk one more thing which I forgot if I see this particular thing what happens you know that when you heat the material when you heat the semiconducting oxide material the you have a higher sensitivity because the depletion layer also increases and you have more uh, available sites for the gas to react. At a lower temperature you have these sites uh, which are reduced, but at a higher temperature you have a increase in the reaction sites. So, the gas 
molecules can react better uh, at a higher temperature compared to a lower temperature. Now, the absorption and adsorption will also be different at a different temperature. Also, uh, if I use the sensor at different temperature, I can also use the sensor as selective sensor. You see all the sensors, any sensor that I have shown you would be sensitive to one or different gas. Is it selective? That is very important. But when you operate and when you use the sensor, you will find that these sensors are not selective. To make those sensors selective, we need to change the temperature that is one way of increasing selectivity. Second way of increasing selectivity is by using the sensor in array and then you use uh, uh, machine learning technique or you can say artificial neural network to delineate that particular VOC. So, uh, the, the role of heater is to increase the temperature of the semiconducting oxide and by increasing the temperature of semiconducting oxide, you are increasing the sensitivity of the sensor. All right. So, coming back to the slide, the role of signal conditioning circuit. So, that the heater has to provide a high and low values at 60 and 90 seconds uh, as you can see from here. Right, uh, and then what will happen? The sensor has to run with alternating high and low heating cycles in order to provide proper measurements. The operating heater voltage are 5 volts, which you can uh, see. Now, you can see here we require from 1.4 volts to 5 volts. Okay. So, that is why you need to have a signal that you can convert from 0 to 1.4 and maximum 5 remains 5. We will see how we can design this, but anyway, the operating voltages are 5 volts during high cycle while it is 1.4 volts while low cycle. So, during low temperature phase CO is absorbed on the plate producing meaningful data, but during the high temperature phase CO is adsorbed, adsorbed is it will come out adsorption, absorb is it will be absorbed in the sensing layer, it will have reaction with the molecules okay, and other compounds evaporate from the sensor plate cleaning it for the next measurement. That means that uh, whenever we apply 1.4 volts uh, there will be absorption change in sensitivity change in resistance not sensitivity change in, change in resistance and when we apply 5 volts the gases that were absorbed would be adsorbed all right. So, the operation is as follows apply 5 volts for 60 seconds do not use this readings for CO measurement apply 144 use this readings for CO measurement uh, geo uh, go to step 1 and do and follow the step conventional analog function generator can produce a signal from 0 to 5 volts. Hence, it is required that we, re we design a signal conditioning circuit uh, to convert this 0 to 5 volts from function generator to 1.4 volts to 5 volts for the output signal uh, and if you can see the block diagram, the block diagram is that there is a signal generator, there is a scaling circuit, driver circuit and finally, you can see the uh, this is a sensor that we are using. Although the implemented scaling circuit convert the input signal op amps cannot provide the required power to run the heater unless it is a power op amp. There is another disadvantage that until we use a power op amp it can not be used to run the heater or drive the heater. Therefore, our uh, sorry for the mistake in the spelling therefore, it is uh, necessary to have a driver circuit to provide enough current uh, to drive the sensor. One way is by using NPN transistor uh, as we have seen in the earlier experiments and we will see in the later experiments as well or by using a MOSFET. So, how can be equation how can we design the circuit and what kind of equations uh, we need to follow. So, you see for mapping x from a b to c d that is from 0 to 5 volts we do convert to 1.4 to 5 volts what we require we require x dash should be equals to x minus a d minus c divided by b minus a plus c. So, this should be 36.6 pi x plus 1.4 if x is 0 if x is 0 then we will have output as 1.4 volts right. If x is uh, 1 then we have output close to 5 volts right. So, for the y equation of conversion from 0 to 1.4 again of 3.6 by 5 must be multiplied with input voltage and voltage of 1.4 to be added as intercept indicates that operation amplifier must be having a gain of 3.6 by 5 it is very easy to understand and an input voltage of 1.4 volts uh, is to be added. This is implemented in uh, the next uh, figure which is right over here right. So, this figure if you see and you can use a multi sim to understand whether the circuit can work according to what we are uh, looking in the in the theory class 
uh, then what we have is that uh, the gain related equations for the op amp is as follows for the inverting r1 by r2 is 3.6 by 5 so r2 equals to 4.6 kilo ohm and r1 can be 3.3 kilo ohms right so if i use this particular uh, circuit then if i have r2 equals to 4.6 and r3 equals to 3.3 then only i can have my gain of 3.6 by 5 right uh, so a voltage 1.4 is added to the first op amp if you again see what we have done is we have added 1.4 volts to the first operation amplifier uh, from the two operation amplifier shown in the figure uh, and as the first op amp is used in inverting mode the output from the op amp is negative for the conversion a second op amp is used in inverting mode with a gain of 1 so if you see this one where this op amp has a gain of 1 and it is just to convert the input signal which is out of phase to in phase so, if there is a at the, at the output there is a uh, the phase would be shifted because of the inverting uh, op amp and here again if you use inverting op amp the phase would be shifted which is similar to phase at the input signal. So, that is the reason of using a two stage uh, operation amplifier again uh, this can act as a buffer or unity gain amplifier because the gain is 1 right. So, using second op amp we have inverting input r 1 by r 2 equals to 3. Uh, so, inverting input you already know for inverting amplifier our gain would be equals to minus R f by R i right that is why we just uh, consider R 1 by R 2. If I have both the resistance value same which is 3.3 .3 kilo ohm what will happen uh, I have gain of 1. So, if I have gain of the, the uh, if I have values 3.3 .3 kilo ohm and 4.6 kilo ohm for op amp 1 and 3.3 .3 kilo ohm for op amp uh, for R 1 and R 2 for op amp 2 then I can uh, design my signal conditioning circuit right uh, and this circuit can be used to convert the input voltage from 0 to 5 volts to 1.4 uh, to 5 volts. Now, uh, let us see uh, a video how we can use the gas sensor with Arduino all right and then I will show you to you how you can use gas sensor with uh, uh, Raspberry Pi and then we will see how we can fabricate the gas sensor we will see the process flow. So, let me just show it to you let me run this video first. Hi these little guys are MQ2 and MQ5 gas sensors they look identical and you can probably tell them apart only by the labels both require exactly the same connections but they detect different gases. In this tutorial, I will show you how to use one of them with Arduino. We will be reading values from the sensor and make the Arduino light an LED when gas concentration rises above a certain level. To build this project, you will need a few things. A 5 volt DC power supply that can deliver at least 0.3 amps. An MQ2 or MQ5 gas sensor. An Arduino board a breadboard, a few wires, an LED, a 120 ohm resistor, a resistor close to 20k, a piece of heat shrink tubing, and a gas lighter or torch. Let's start playing with the sensor. The gas sensor has six pins. These two middle legs are heater coil pins. Don't worry about polarity, it is not important in this sensor. The next two legs are A pins and they should be connected to each other. The last pair is named B and these two pins should also be connected to each other. I will connect my wires to the sensor using heat shrink tubing.
Now let's connect the sensor to the breadboard. One of the heater coil wires goes to the positive rail and the other one to ground. Connect both A wires to the positive rail on the breadboard. Hook up the B wires to the same row and to ground 3A20K resistor. A jumper wire goes between the B pins and A0 pin on your Arduino board. Connect your breadboard ground rail with the Arduino ground pin. Hook up your LEDs negative lead to ground and the positive lead to one of empty rows on the breadboard. Connect a 120 ohm resistor to the positive lead of your LED. In the other end of the resistor, through a jumper wire to your Arduino's pin number 8. Connect a jumper wire to the positive rail on your breadboard and another one to the ground rail. Hook up your power supply to these jumper wires and the Arduino to your computer. Download the code from my website and upload it to your Arduino. You'll find a link in the description below. Now go to Arduino IDE, select Tools, Serial Monitor, and you should see a value between 0 and 1023. If your sensor detects gas, the value goes higher. Readings from the sensor are reliable after about 2-3 to three minutes after powering up. After about 3 minutes, you'll notice the readings will go lower and stabilize at a certain base value. Now I'll try to give my sensors some gas from a mini torch. As you can see, the value increases instantly. When it reaches 500, the LED lights up. You can adjust sensitivity by changing the sensor value in the code to match your needs. Now you know how to use a gas sensor with the Arduino. Okay. Now let us see the another video where we are using Raspberry Pi. Let me play the video.
okay. Now if you see uh, uh, what we have to do is uh, that I will show it to you how can we design uh, a gas sensor uh, uh, and what are the process flow for designing that particular sensor okay. Alright, so till then you take care, I will see you in the next class, bye.